Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillahi alameen. Amma ba'd. All praise is due to Allah who created man from clay, the master and owner of judgment day. Allah who knows what we conceal and knows what we reveal and what leaves may fall and what the animals feel. And upon his messenger we ask his salah and his praise and we ask to remain steadfast till the end of our days. Dear listeners and dear brothers and sisters, our topic today is salah. And I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this advice is sincere and that it is taken as advice rather than a lecture. Struggling with Salah is something that many Muslims have experienced. Some have overcome and triumphed, while others were subdued. We address those who gave up their Salah and do not pray anymore. Are you too busy to worship Allah? Or perhaps too lazy? Or maybe even too arrogant? Or maybe you have a good heart and are not in need of prayer? And many people say that. They say that it's all about the heart and that the external actions are not important. So if the external actions are not important, why did the Prophet ﷺ say, As-salatu imadu al-deen. Man aqamaha faqad aqama al-deen. Wa man hadamaha faqad hadam al-deen. That the prayer is the pillar of the religion. Whoever upholds it and performs it, he has upheld his deen or his religion. And whoever leaves it or destroys it, he has destroyed his religion. And it's one of the five pillars of Islam. It's the second of the five pillars. And pillars are what hold up a foundation. So if you don't pray, then what is your Islam standing upon? What is holding up your Islam? The companion Ma'ad ibn Jabr radiallahu anhu, he asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, what is ra'sul amr? What is the head or the most important issue? And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam responded to him, ra'sul amr al-islam that the head or the most important thing is Islam and its pillar and what it stands upon is Salah. And the Prophet ﷺ said, There are five prayers which Allah prescribed for His slave during the day and the night. Whoever does them and does not willfully neglect them, Allah will be bound to grant him admittance to paradise. And whoever does not do them, he will have no such guarantee. And if Allah wills, and if He wills meaning Allah, He will punish him, and if He wills, He will grant him admittance to paradise. So if you claim that you have a good heart, and that it's sufficient for you not to pray, then how will your judgment be? Because we know that the first thing you're going to be asked about is prayer. Even before what's in your heart, before they get to what's in your heart, the first thing you'll be asked about on the day of judgment is your prayer. And the first matter, the Prophet ﷺ tells us in the hadith, the first matter that the slave will be brought to account for on the day of judgment is the prayer. If it is sound, then the rest of his deeds will be sound. And if it's bad, then the rest of his deeds will be bad. So that means salah is first and foremost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says describing people in the Quran saying, Inna al-insana khuliqa halu'a That verily man was created impatient. إِذَا مَسَّهُ الشَّرُّ جَزُوعَ He is irritable. When evil touches him, so when bad things happen, he's irritable. وَإِذَا مَسَّهُ الْخَيْرُ مَنُوعًا and, and he's stingy when good touches him. So when something good happens, he becomes stingy. So aren't these bad descriptions that someone is impatient, irritable when evil touches him, and then when good touches him, he becomes stingy? These are bad descriptions and they're indicative of a bad heart. So then how do you prevent this? And who is better and who is an exception to this case? Allah Azza wa Jal continues, إِلَّا الْمُصَلِّينَ Except those who are devoted to salah. الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَلَى صَلَاتِهِمْ دَائِمُونَ Those who remain constant in their prayers. So that means then, that there is a direct link between what is in the heart and your actions. And we know that saying, لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا الله is one of the keys to paradise. That to say that there is no God worthy of worship but Allah, it's one of the keys to paradise. But I ask you, what is the value of saying that there is no God worthy of worship except Allah, and yet you don't worship Allah? And salah is one of the greatest acts of worship done with the body. 
So how can you have a good heart and not pray when the Prophet ﷺ said, whoever leaves salah disbelieves. And some people say, well I don't harm others. So it's not important for me. Maybe salah is important for other people, but not for me because I don't harm others, I don't do bad things. So how can the salah not be important for you if Allah mentions it in the Qur'an more than 700 times? And there are those who say that the people who pray are the worst people and that they're liars and that they're this and that. And this is a statement that many people make. But Allah makes a different kind of statement. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ الصَّلَاةَ تَنْهَا عَنِ الْفَحْشَاءِ وَالْمُنْكَرِ That verily Allah prevents the evil and the wicked deeds. So who are we going to believe? And then some people make the excuse of laziness. And perhaps laziness is not the real reason why you don't pray. Because you're physically capable of doing many things. If a company hires you and they pay well, and they're going to give you benefits, but work just starts a little early, you're going to go on time. And you're going to strive and to struggle to make it there on time. So perhaps the reason is that you don't know the benefits of salah. And that's why you feel lazy. And if your airplane is going to leave 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. and you have to get up early to go to the airport, you're going to get up early and you're going to rush to the airport. So how can one say that they're not that they're lazy and they're not capable. When you find them at work, they're very energetic and they're very hard working. Too lazy to serve Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And He's the one who has given you all these blessings, your health, your wealth, your eyesight, your intelligence, your loved ones. And He's the one who takes care of you every day. And He protects you from harm and from calamities every single day. And He gives you the ability to recognize true guidance. And much of the creation is astray. So you should be ashamed to not pray in front of Allah while He's taking care of you. One of the early Muslims, Ibrahim ibn Adham, rahimahullah, a man came to him and he said, Oh Abu Ishaq, I have many sins, so give me admonition. So he wants him to tell him something that will benefit him. So he can stop his sinning. So then Ibrahim tells him, If you accept these five conditions, and you're able to do them, then no sin is going to harm you. So the man says, give me the first. So Ibrahim tells him, if you want to disobey Allah, then do not eat of his provision. Do not eat. If you want to disobey Allah, don't eat from what he provides for you. The food and drink and all these things that he provides, don't eat from it. So then the man says, from where will I eat then? And everything on the earth is his. So then Ibrahim tells him, is it appropriate to eat from his provision and disobey him? So then the man says, no, give me the second advice. So Ibrahim tells him, if you want to disobey Allah, then do not stay in his lands. So the man says, this is greater, and then where should I live then? So then Ibrahim tells him, does it make sense to eat of his provision and live in his land and sin against him? And the man says, no, give me the third advice. And he tells him, if you want to obey him while you're eating of his provision, and living in his land, then go somewhere where he cannot see you. So then he says, O Ibrahim, and he is the one who sees what is in the hearts. So then Ibrahim tells him, Is it suitable to eat of the provision of Allah, and live in his land, and then sin against him while he sees you, and knows what you do? So the man said, No, give me the fourth advice. And he says, When the angel of death comes to take your soul, say, Give me a chance to repent to Allah and to do good deeds. So the man says, he won't accept from me. So Ibrahim tells him, so if you're not able to push death away, so you can repent, and you know that when it comes to you, it can't be delayed, so how can you expect to be saved? So he says, give me the fifth. So Ibrahim tells him, when the angels come to take you to the hellfire, don't go with them. And the man says, they won't let me. So he tells him, so how do you expect to be saved then? And he tells him, enough, enough, O Ibrahim, astaghfirullah, that I seek forgiveness with Allah and I repent to him. And then it is said that after that, he took to the worship of Allah and he stayed away from sins until he died. Don't these conditions apply to you? Don't you live in Allah's land and eat of Allah's provision? So why don't you pray to the one who takes care of you? Perhaps as we said, you are not aware of the excellence of prayer. In the book of Muslim, Aisha radiallahu anha narrates that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said 
The two rak'ahs before dawn prayer, before the fajr prayer, are better than the whole world and all that it contains. So we have not even begun to talk about the five obligatory prayers. These are just two extra rak'ahs you do before the obligatory prayer, before fajr prayer. Two extra rak'ahs that are better than the whole world and everything that's in it.